Welcome back, Sebastian here. So I know some people were asking for a video specifically talking about Liam Lawson. So here it is. Uh, and I think, you know, the timing's perfect as it has been confirmed uh, that he will drive for Alpha Tauri this coming weekend at the Italian Grand Prix and likely at the uh, next race too uh, in Singapore in a couple weeks after that. So Liam Lawson, a uh, Red Bull Young Driver, of course, has been a member of their uh, Young Driver Academy for quite a few years now. Uh, so today I want to just look at his results, uh, kind of from Formula 3 onwards. Uh, results before that, you know, don't really matter a whole lot, especially in those lower formula. So 2019, rookie year in Formula 3, 16 races, no poles, no wins, 2 podiums, and 41 points. So he finished pretty respectable 11th place in the championship with MP Motorsport, who are definitely not a prima, they're more of a midfield team in Formula 3. 2020, second year in Formula 3, 18 races, one pole position, three wins, six podiums, 143 points. So 102 point improvement and fifth in the championship for High Tech GP, who are generally one of the better teams. Not Again, not a Prima level team, but probably in that tier right below Prima. 2021, uh, he moves up to Formula 2. 23 races, one pole, one win, three podiums, 103 points, ninth in the championship with again with High Tech GP, who are a pretty good team uh, in Formula 2. That same year, he decides to do a dual program, also races in DTM Championship with AF Corsa. 16 races, four pole position, three wins, 10 podiums, 227 points, second in the championship. Uh, lost that championship in very controversial circumstances involving uh, a driver who is his championship rivals, basically who would teammate kind of for the same manufacturer basically deliberately crashing him out so pretty much deserved to win that championship very very good showing that year uh in that series in dtm 2022 28 races in formula two no poles four wins 10 podiums 149 points and third in the championship this time with carlin and then 2023 seven races uh this time in super formula uh, seven races, no poles, three wins, three podiums, 87 points, and he's currently second in the championship with Team Mugen. So uh, another thing that I just want to add in context is, uh, you know, how did their teammates do compared to Lawson, or how did Lawson do compared to his teammates? So I've gotten them written down here, didn't wouldn't fit on the board, but so 2019 with MP Motorsports, his teammates were Simon Laxton and Richard Bershore. Uh, Laxton finished 23rd in the championship, two points for sure. 13th in the championship with 34 points. A little bit behind Lawson, but he already had half a season of experience in GP2, which was the predecessor to Formula 3 the year before. 2022, 2020, again, uh, in Formula 3, his one full-time teammate was Dennis Hauger, who went on to win the title that year, who was a rookie. Uh, 17th in the championship with four points, uh, 14 points. And then the other seat was split between the year by Max Futrell and Pierre-Louis Chauvet, who finished 19th and 20th in the championship with five points each. So 2020 and with High Tech GP, uh, Lawson basically obliterated his two teammates there. 2021, uh, his teammate in Formula 2 was Yuri Vips, who finished sixth in the championship with 120 points. So he actually lost to his teammate his rookie year in Formula 2. Uh, Yuri Vips, a very talented driver, uh, but definitely one with a lot of controversy who will almost certainly not be uh, in F1 anytime in the future. Uh, let's see, and then the really interesting one for me is this uh, DTM stint. His teammate was actually Williams driver Alex Albon, uh, who finished sixth in the championship that year with 132 30 points. Uh, he did miss the final round of the season, but really interesting that uh, Lawson was basically beating his teammate who was at that time uh, who is that was his off year between his Red Bull year and his Williams year. So uh, really interesting there. And then 2022, his teammate was current Williams driver, Albon's teammate, uh, Logan Sargent, who finished fourth in the championship with 148 points. But interesting to note, uh, only two wins for Sargent and four podiums. So six less podiums and two less wins. So uh, Lawson was definitely getting more of those really high finishes. Uh, but had a lot more non-point finishes as well. In 2023, uh, his teammate is uh, Tomoki Nojiri, uh, who is third in the championship with 84 points, three points behind Lawson, uh, but he did miss around with injury 
and he has two wins and four podiums. So a bit more consistent, uh, his teammate in Super Formula. So, you know, I think Lawson's really interesting driver. He's definitely, he strikes me as a driver who's very adaptable. I know uh, he won his first race in DTM, first race in Super Formula, and first race in Formula 2. So he's generally a pretty adaptable driver, I would think. The other interesting thing to note is that the lack, general lack of pole positions outside of his DTM stint. Only one pole position in Formula 2, one pole position in Formula 3. The Formula 3 one's a bit more excusable because uh, he basically Pramas are much more dominant in that series, and he never drove for Prima, so it's a bit more understandable. The Formula 2 one's a bit more uh, tr troubling, only one pole position across two years. Um, and of course, no pole positions in Super Formula either. So I think there are some questions about his qualifying ability. His racing ability generally does look very good though. Uh, he does look like a driver who does is probably a Formula 1 level uh, driver on a Sunday. Saturday, I do have some questions obviously with this past weekend, it's basically impossible to tell because of the conditions that we had at Zambor this past weekend. But, you know, he reminds me a lot of a Mick Schumacher, a driver who's not great on Saturdays, but was generally pretty good on Sundays. And it'll be interesting to see um, what happens going forward. Of course, um, you know, there was a lot of discussion before Nick DeVries was fired about who would, if the, he would be replaced mid-season, who would his replacement be. Lawson was generally seen as a candidate for that seat. But uh, Red Bull didn't. It was seen that Red Bull didn't want to rush him into the seat mid-season, and they were going to save him uh, potentially for next a Alpha Tower seat next year. Of course, uh, circumstances happened at uh, Zandvoort, and he basically was brought in anyway. So it'll be really interesting to see uh, how things go uh, in Italy and potentially the race after in Singapore. Um, I think. You know, I would expect a little bit better performance at both races, given that he will have the full weekend to prepare uh, for those races. He'll have all three practice sessions, ideally. Um, the other interesting twist in this tale as well is that, of course, uh, Nick DeVries super subbed for Alex Albon at last year's Italian Grand Prix, got a points finish, and parlayed that into a Alpha Tauri seed this year. So obviously, it'll be really interesting to see how um, Lawson does, and of course, that being said, uh, two to three races only is a very, very small sample size, so it's very hard to say how good of a driver is he. Um, but that being said, uh, he'll definitely be trying to do as well as he can and hopefully get uh, do well enough to uh, be rewarded with a Alpha Tower seat next year. So that's all for my look at Liam Lawson, uh, just at his junior career so far, and just talking a little bit about him and what I how I think he'll do. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And of course, I'll be out back tomorrow with my preview for the Italian Grand Prix. Goodbye.